Romans chapter 13 Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, he who resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of him who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. He is the servant of God to execute his wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be subject not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay all of them their dues, taxes to whom taxes are due, Revenue to whom revenue is due, respect to whom respect is due, honour to whom honour is due. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves his neighbour has fulfilled the law. The commandments you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet and any other commandments are summed up in this sentence. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what hour it is, how it is full time now for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. Let us then cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us conduct ourselves becoming as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Romans chapter 14 As for the man who is weak, welcome him, but not for disputes over opinions. One believes he may eat anything, while the weak man eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who abstains, and let not him who abstains pass judgment on him who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld for the master is able to make him stand. One man esteems one day as better than another, while another man esteems all days alike. Let everyone be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day, observes it in the honour of the Lord. He also who eats, eats in the honour of the Lord. Since he gives thanks to God, while he who abstains, abstains in honour of the Lord and gives thanks to God. None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead 
and of the living why do you pass judgment on your brothers or you why do you despise your brother for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of god for it is written as i live says the lord every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall praise to god so each of us shall give account of himself to god let us no more pass judgment on one another but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother i know and am persuaded in the lord jesus that nothing is unclean in itself but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean if your brother is being injured by what you eat you are no longer walking in love do not let what you eat cause the ruin of one for whom christ died so do not let what is good to you be spoken of as evil for the kingdom of god does not mean food and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the holy spirit he who thus serves christ is acceptable to god and approved by men let us then pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding do not for the sake of food destroy the work of god everything is indeed clean but it is wrong for any one to make others fall by what he eats it is right not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that makes your brother stumble the faith that you have keep between yourself and god happy is he who has no reason to judge himself for what he approves but he who has doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not act from faith for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin Romans chapter 15 We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves let each of us please his neighbor for his good to edify him for Christ did not please himself but as it is written the reproaches of those who reproach thee fell on me for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of scriptures we might have hope may the god of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the god and father of our lord jesus christ welcome one another therefore as christ has welcomed you for the glory of god for i tell you that christ became a servant to the circumcised to show god's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the gentiles might glorify god for his mercy as it is written therefore i will praise thee among the gentiles and sing to thy name and again it is said rejoice o gentiles with his people and again praise the lord all gentiles and let all the peoples praise him and further isaiah says the root of jesse shall come he who rises to rule the gentiles in him shall the gentiles hope may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the holy spirit you may abound in hope i myself am satisfied about you brethren that you yourselves are full of goodness filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another but on some points i have written to you very boldly by way of reminder because of the grace given by god 
to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has wrought through me to win obedience from the Gentiles by word and deed, by the power of the signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and as far round as Lycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ, thus making it my ambition to preach the gospel not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on another man's foundation. But as it is written, They shall see who have never been told of, and they shall understand who have never heard of him. This is the reason why I have so often been hindered from coming to you. But now, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, and since I have longed for many years to come to you, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain and to be sped on my journey there by you, once I have enjoyed your company for a little. At present, however, I am going to Jerusalem with aid for the saints. For Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to make some contribution for the poor among the saints at Jerusalem. They were pleased to do it, and indeed they are in debt to them. For if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessing, they ought also to be of service to them in material blessings. When therefore I have completed this, and have delivered to them what has been raised, I shall go on my way of you to Spain. And I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. I appeal to you, brethren, by our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf, that I may be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy, and be refreshed in your company. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. Romans chapter 16 I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deaconess of the church at Sancria, that you may receive her in the Lord as befits the saint, and help her in whatever she may require from you, for she has been a helper of many, and of myself as well. Greet Prissa and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life, to whom not only I but also all churches of the Gentiles give thanks. Greet also the church in their houses. Greet my beloved Epanetus, who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked hard among you. Greet Andronicus and Junius, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. They are men of note among the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Staticus. Greet Apelilus, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong in the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsmen, Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Trifania and Trifosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, eminent in the Lord, also his mother and mine. Greet Asyntricus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren who are with them. Greet Philologus, 
Julia, Nereus and his sister Olympus and all saints who are with them greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. I appeal to you brethren to take note of those who create dissensions and difficulties in opposition to the doctrine which you have been taught avoid them for such persons do not serve our lord jesus christ but their own appetites and by fair and flattering words they deceive the hearts of the simple minded for while your obedience is known to all so that i rejoice over you i would have you wise as to what is good and guileless as to what is evil then the god of peace will soon crush satan under your feet the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you timothy my fellow worker greets you so do lucius and jason and sosipater my kinsmen i tertius the writer of this letter greet you in the lord gaius who is the host to me and to the whole church greets you erastus the city treasurer and our brother cortus greet you now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of jesus christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed that through the prophetic writings is made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal god to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise god be glory forevermore through jesus christ amen